What's up, everybody? So I just got back from the Mullen Fire in Wyoming, which was exciting. It was my first fire assignment as a, a EMT on the fire line. And I bought uh, some ski boots. So this phone is slowly sliding down uh, before I left. So uh, I'm going to do an unboxing of Solomon S Lab Mountain Downhill Alpine slash touring ski boots for you real quick. So, uh, truth be told, I already opened the box and took the cellophane off, but uh, I'll show you guys what uh, is in the box here. So, it comes in a, in a big box uh, with the paperwork in case you want to return it, but I got it on a pro deal uh, through Experticity, and it says... Thank you for purchasing from Solomon. Return policy. We do not accept returns for orders that are placed through our VIP, employee, or hookup sales programs right at the top there. So if you have any of those three programs, uh, you better make sure you want these before you buy them. But uh, that's why we do videos of this. Let me put this light on. Oh, that's a little bit better. Uh, this phone keeps sliding down because of this. Uh, phone case so it comes in a nice snazzy box um, okay. and uh, open the box up so hello hello so I got 29 29 and a half which is pretty small for me I could go uh, 30 honestly but um, the one of the selling points, so they didn't have a 30, they only had 29, 29 and a half, nine and a half. One of the selling points for me is that this is like one of the most highly customizable boots out there right now. The uh, Solomon S Lab Mountain um, boot. Uh, it has a HD custom shell that you uh, take to a boot fitter and they can heat it up and mold it to your foot very easily. It's designed for that. Um, as well as the liner uh, has some customizable functions. I got a shave. I just got back from the fire. I was there for two weeks. I look like a scrub. Okay, so they have some extra um, insoles, and I forget what they call them. Like, uh, so here's a couple insoles, and I, I, I'm not sure how these are different than the ones in there. They may just be extra inserts. And then there's laces. Um, I'll show you where the laces come into play, but there's two sets of like normal laces. Um, and then these are like, what does it say on B, Biagioli. Ah, Biagioli. So maybe this is used in the customized process, or maybe this is just used to elevate the foot if you want to, you know, get a little bit of a tighter fit if the the volume is too tight um, or rather if there's too much volume you could put those in I'm not entirely sure but again there's two sets there's black and white inserts um, yeah the, the the boots are quite tight fitting um, I do have a pretty wide foot like I usually buy wide shoes um, especially in the forefoot I have a pretty like wide forefoot um, uh, the ball of my foot, or I guess you would call it. Uh, so I don't usually like narrow fitting shoes or boots, but the fact that you can customize these makes all the difference. Uh, and I can't take them back. So there you go. So here they are in all their glory. Uh, I can't really see because I don't have a return screen. Um, but uh, so light here. So, got left one and right one. And so there's some in interesting features on these boots. So this zone on the boot is different than any other ski boot I've ever seen in my life. It's, uh, it's like a material, it's not plastic. It's um, some new fangled, like this is like rubberized. And then in here is some like, like waterproof kind of membrane type deal. 
Uh, so let's put this there. And uh, so I really like how um, clean they are in the sense of how few moving parts. Like I skied my whole life, and uh, you know, ski boots have a lot of different um, setups, but for the most part, the convention is two buckles on the top, two buckles on the bottom, and that's kind of been the way it's been in Alpine downhill forever. But now, with touring becoming such a big deal, everybody wants to get in the backcountry, myself included. Um, with the shift bindings by Solomon and Atomic, uh, and obviously material science is getting better and better, light is the way to go. And these boots are very, very light. Like, that's the thing that these boots kind of solve. And I was really looking at the Scarpa, my Strollies, um, as well, the RS and the XT, but I am going with the Solomons, um, even though now I find out I can't return the Solomons because online on Experticity it said um, that Scarpa was not accepting returns so I went with the, with the Solomons but I have the Solomon shift bindings they're with my um, black diamond skis uh, at the shop and I got to take them my boots to get them mounted but uh, the Solomon shifts are another product in the same vein as these boots they're, they're branded the same um, S lab is kind of Solomon's like uh, touring slash downhill branding. Um, and the idea is kind of bridging the gap between what was conventionally kind of European, super light, like hyper light tech binding touring market and the like conventional downhill inside the, you know, ski resort in inbounds, aggressive skier, alpine skier. Um, I grew up skiing inbound, skied my whole life, heavy boots, you know, long skis. Skis got fatter over the years. You know, they were skinny when I first started um, as, a little kid, as a little kid. But uh, weight reduction was not really a thing in downhill skiing because it was, you know, associated with less um, power or less control. But I mean, I don't know exactly. I think these are 1,440 grams, but like, if you're like me, that doesn't really mean anything. Just, just take it from me. These are very, very light. Like, like I was on the fire and I was using these uh, Danner boots and like no bullshit. Like these, these boots for you, for use on the fire line as a wildland firefighter are like almost the same weight. They're not quite like these are definitely heavier, but not by much, honestly. Like, they're pretty close. So that goes to show you how light these boots are. So uh, I'll do a quick try on, because I'm still trying to kind of like fall in love with them myself because they're my new boots. So um, let's do a quick, like, kind of show you how they work. So instead of, again, like a four point, there's two main buckles. The buckle on the forefoot, if you will, the buckle on the front is neat in that like it has a frame that kind of grabs the whole bottom construction. So you just pop that off. And one of the things that I noticed uh, several years ago with a pair of boots that I had that was an ingenious development that's been around forever now, but it's, it's I think worth mentioning when you unbuckle your your buckle, you can you can rotate the buckle, and then it's not gonna it's not gonna grab again. So like one thing you'll notice when you're tired and after a day of skiing, you want to get out of your boots, and now it's still buckled. See, so you so that's no good because then you're trying to get your foot out. But what all the the new technology does is you open, and then you just rotate, and then you don't have to worry about it. So. So there's the lower buckle, and then the upper buckle, you do the same thing, right? Open, and this has a cool pivot on it. So this actually, the whole buckle pivots forward. So it's not just on one pivot point. It like, it like has kind of another, um, how, do, how do I explain it? Like it has, you know, a real far range of motion. So it has like the main click, but then it, 
clicks again down. See that? So that's kind of cool. And then again, you just rotate it, right? So now the two main buckles are open. I gotta take this off, but still just new new boot, new new boot goofing, just goofing, just new boot goofing. So then in all of the downhill boots nowadays, um, the conventional wisdom is you need a power strap. Uh, this is a power strap. It grabs the, the ankle of the boot um, and, and really is, is how you can generate a lot of power, uh, hence the name. So this one's kind of interesting. I was, it was taking me a while to figure it out. It, it looks like two ply here. So I thought that was like where, you, where it's a Velcro, but it's not a Velcro. It's only a slip uh, fasten device. I don't know what the hell to call it other than that. So you just press it there and then undo this and you gotta do it, undo it all the way, right? Because if you don't undo it all the way, it won't, it won't undo. So there is it undone all the way. And now the boot will, you know, the tongue comes all the way out. So here's kind of, let me move the, okay, so the construction's kind of cool, actually, in my opinion. So you've got a kind of like, so you got that, the, the bottom buckle where it's, a ch it's attached with kind of a neat way of, of, you know, they cut a lot of mass off of the boot, so it's a little bit less massive and, and less heavy and yet through kind of 3d printing or whatever they they do maintained a lot of rigidity and strength um it's kind of a cool design and you can see that the like four foot the way that that works so you open up the shell should have done this on the one without this uh but i'll just take it off should i do it should i do it i'm doing it okay it's done so the the main flex shell open the, the the upper cuff or whatever you want to call it opens like that and then there's kind of a tongue there that's like almost free floating it's not attached to the lower buckle but it's attached to the lower boot and this part doesn't really articulate so you, this part just goes you know um uh, forward so it's it's pr it like feels pretty flimsy honestly um, but I've already tried them on once I'll try them on again on, on camera it, it has a lot of um, rigidities and, and the thing about rigidity with the ski boot is that it's gonna be able to uh, translate force into the ski and therefore be powerful it's gonna allow you to ski fast ski under control um, so the thing about it being flimsy, so to speak, is, it, is it, it's, it, it's quite easy to get into. So you just grab that tongue, push it forward, step in, boom, you're in. One of the cool things is it has a different material in the liner right there, which is a really super plush material, like, 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 a, like, a, like a super light memory foam like a super not not dense memory foam. I can see this getting super funky when I sweat in it a lot. I'm gonna have to wash these liners pretty regularly, which is not something I'm used to doing, but like this is like a super premium material, this red. And then this is like kind of a more aerated material, for lack of a better way. You can see how like it it is like pretty light and airy. It's like a, it's like a more dense foam, this black stuff, but it's, it's perforated, so that's interesting. So it's like a, it's a multiple material construction in the liner. So the, the, the purpose of putting that red right there is because that's where your heel hits as you put your foot in, and so it just helps it slide right in, right? So boom, like it's super easy to get into. Like it's it's pretty pretty much of a no-brainer. So then you got the, the um, ski walk mechanism. Um, that is to say, you, you're in, in ski mode, you're that way, and then in walk mode, you're wide. So, uh, you know, it's nice to put this boots on in walk mode, 
Uh, I always try to put my boots on as, as uh, loose as I can at first because you can always tighten them up. So this this buckle is going to take some getting used to. It just it just works differently than any other buckle that I've tried. It, it goes it goes to there, which is normal, but then it like has an extra click. It's weird. So like you get resistance there, and then it clicks again. So okay, so I think that's the way to do it. Is just like make it click. And then just get it to the very edge it's neat it has like a little extended bit there to to kind of start the fastening process and then they they like bore out the center of this um catch mechanism to save weight so then just click that on boom and then you can go to the next one boom and then this is going to take getting used to but you just grab the power strap so the power strap is integrated it's actually bolted on there's no removing it. See, there's a bolt right there and a bolt right there. So it just kind of, it just functions like another buckle, actually. It's weird. Like a lot of power straps are like big Velcro things, but this one, like you fasten, fasten, and then just pull that through, kind of pull it tight. And then there's a little catch here and it, it's actually fastened as well. Like I was trying to pull it forward but you can't, it just stays right there. So you just push the excess right there. And then I'm in ski mode right now. So you can see I'm, uh, I'm, I'm quite certain you can change the forward lean. I'm really not sure about how exactly to do that. I'd have to go online and check it out, but um, it feels, I mean, it, it feels rock solid, honestly. Like, like as, as, powerful of an Alpine downhill boat boot as I've had, and I've had Solomon Quests for years and years and years, and something before that. Like, I've had really robust downhill ski boots, and, you know, I've hiked in them and toured in them and stuff, and for me, it's time to get a boot that is a little bit more capable in the backcountry, because I do try to do Tumalo a lot, and we're in Bend, Oregon, and looking to do, you know, a lot more touring this year, so, this is a very light boot, and yet in ski movement mode, it like it, it has flex, but it's pretty darn rigid. And so then to get into uh, tour mode, it's just click, and then look at how much uh, range of motion it has. Like crazy, right? Like a lot of range of motion, like like unbelievable. Going forward, it it. It's a little bit harsh, like if you want to like step off forward, it, it kind of has a, a point at which it doesn't want to go more than that. You know, it doesn't just fold in on itself. It's quite rigid, I think, because of this extra piece um, there. But uh, not not uncomfortable. Um, I do, I'm going to get it molded and stuff, but uh, still pretty darn comfortable. So. I think the kind of the move to get in is undo the power strap and then always do that quick half turn, half turn, push the tongue down, get your toe in, use that red bit of the liner. And then, so they give you those, um, those laces for right here on the liner. I don't know if you can see that. There's two lace bits there and two lace bits there. And you can lace the liner tight which is going to give you a little bit more comfort because the liner is like super plush not only is that red bit like a nice little um addition but just like overall the liner is very comfortable uh so kind of just line it up make sure all the bits are together okay we're in ski mode get the lowest one on get this one on Get the power strap on. I mean, that's crazy. Like for a downhill boot to only have three actuating parts is not the norm. Um, uh, so I mean, like here's comparison. Like ski here, ski mode, walk mode. Mode, walk mode. So, yeah, like 
in walk mode, and again, in walk mode, you just click, and the way to do it is you're supposed to click and undo that one as well, and then you really have just a ton of freedom. I'm not always in the, the habit of undoing my top buckle in walk mode, but I mean like straight up, like these are not, they don't even feel like ski boots. I mean, there's, there's definitely some pinch points. I definitely have to get them molded. For me, I can feel on my, I don't know how you would say it, the, just kind of my, my ankle, like my, my anterior ankle, um, is, is a little bit our pinch point, um, but not terrible, and they'd certainly wear in, but I mean, getting them molded is gonna be a game changer. So, as far as the mobility, yeah, just there's some, there's some pinch points for me, kind of there and there and there. So, I'm interested to get them molded, and then if you wanna go to ski mode, it's as simple as, first you gotta lean forward into your ski position, click, click, and now, I'm in schema, and same thing. It's click, click. Now, and you see, you heard that extra click of engaging. So, boom, boom. You do like a, you know, little boot scoot and boogie. I, I, I love Reno 911. I was thinking about Lieutenant Dangle <laughs> a few days ago. I couldn't get that shit out of my head because I was looking forward to getting these boots where, where he gets some new cowboy boots and he's just go, hey, I'm just goofing. Just new boot goofing. <laughs> so, yeah, Solomon S Lab Mountain Ski Boots. Uh, recommend, but I haven't skied them yet. So, uh, you know, we'll get back to you on that. They are. Um, tech compatible boots. They have the receiver for pin bindings. Again, that's really their utility is being kind of a, you know, does it all boot. And then they have the Vibram soles, which are pretty neat. They uh, are ISO, whatever, compatible with walking. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I certainly did. And I'm stoked to have some new boots. Yeah. Stoked. Enjoy.